How you doing guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Scott from King Vehicle Damage Repair. If you're new around here, King Vehicle Damage Repair is a mobile repair specialist. And as you can see today, we have a BMW 1 Series. This BMW 1 Series is finished in Valencia Orange. And today we are going to be repairing a scuff slash dent to the lower rear quarter panel section, otherwise known as a dog leg, and a blend into the rear door. Now, um, first time I think I've come across a BMW 1 Series in this color. So before we get into anything, the first thing we are going to do is a spray out card. Why? Because if you do not do a spray out and you assume that the paint you've mixed up is a match, you're not gonna find out until you've repaired and painted the vehicle. And then if it's not right, you're not going to look very good. And it's not good to assume. So what we're gonna do, as I say, is do a spray out of the color. First off, we'll color match the vehicle. Once we're happy, we'll then get into the repair. So let's do this. All right, so we've done the spray outs and I went with the standard shade first, which was two orange. To give you guys an understanding as to why you must do spray outs, this is the reason. This is the exact same color that is a standard shade, and that is another shade, which is a slightly lighter shade. Same color, two completely different variations. If you assume that the standard shade is always gonna be the one that matches, you're gonna end up in some problems, and I'll show you why. If we put this up to the vehicle, you'll see that the standard shade is way too orange. If we look at the lighter shade, we've got a blendable match there. So, basic rules. I don't understand why repairers, in some cases, don't do spray outs it's a five minute process maybe a 10 minute process doesn't matter how good your repair looks if the color's not right the first thing your client is going to say once you've completed a brilliant repair is the color doesn't match so always do your spray outs anyway let's give you a quick overview of the damage and then we'll start the repair process Okay guys, so we're gonna work on the dog leg section because that is where the bulk or the main area of damage is. I don't want to affect inside the door shut, so I'm just gonna put some two inch masking tape there to protect an area that I don't want to damage or cause any sanding marks to because I wanna keep the inside the door shut nice and prep free. I'm also gonna just mask up the edge of the door so I don't hit that. There's a minor scuff on here, which we'll remove once the bulk of the repair work is done. But if you come in here, you'll see that there's a scuff with a very, very slight dent. Not sure how well this is gonna come across on camera, but those of you maybe with a keener eye for detail, you might pick that up. First thing we're gonna do is get a block, um, literally just to highlight where the dent is. Then we'll put a very, very minimal skim of dolphin glaze, or maybe a slight skim of body filler first followed by some dolphin glaze which has a self-leveling property and it'll just help me get that panel or that part of the panel nice and straight so first thing is let's get a block let's uh, rub it over the area that we're gonna repair and that will highlight where the dents are just in case I clip the seal because we don't want to muck up the seal I'm just gonna put some masking tape there and as I say I'm just gonna glide over where that then is now if you come in what you'll see here is you'll see that my block has keyed up the areas that are flat and you can see that there's still a shiny bit here what that's indicating is that the panel is lower in other words it means there's a slight dent there so we give that a good key up and then as I say we'll use a minimal minimal amount of body filler just to straighten that out and then we'll be good to start prepping that for primer. So let's get some filler mixed up and we'll get that skimmed over. So before we apply anything to the panel, we'll just clean that up to remove any dust. 
And what I'll say to you is, is that those of you in the repair industry will know that you can't fill over paint with body filler, but with some fillers you can. This is actually a finishing filler, which is you can use for very, very minor dents, and you are able to fill over paint. Usually if you're dealing with any heavy dents, you'd have to bare metal the area first and then fill only on the bare metal and not on the paint, otherwise you'll get sinkage. But because this dent is so shallow, we can use a finishing filler, as I say, which you are allowed to fill over paint with. So we we'll mix that with a hardener, which is what I'm doing now. Then a chemical reaction will take place with some heat. And what that will do is it will make the filler go nice and hard. So we want to get a nice tight skim in here. Just a tiny bit on there to start with. It's important you get that first skim nice and tight so it goes into the dent and then we'll fill over a, a larger area, making it nice and smooth. Try and get this as clean as possible and as smooth as possible because you'll have less work to do once you come to rub it down. And you see I put my masking tape in there so what I can then do, if I open the door shut, I haven't got filler going in the edge of the door shut. All I'll now do is peel off that masking tape. And I've got a nice clean edge, lovely. Let's get some lamps on. So while we're waiting for this, to dry, just clean up the panels and get them ready to be prepped. So I'm gonna scotch the door and the rear quarter panel with some water and a prep and, prep and blend solution. So obviously you're out with me today. This isn't gonna be the only repair of the day and it's important that we keep things moving and be productive. So whilst I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll get the panels prepped. Once the panels are prepped, I can start rubbing that down. Might need to go over with a second skim, depending on how that rubs down. If not, then we'll just finish it with some dolphin glaze, which as I said, has self-leveling properties and helps me get that panel nice and straight. Once that's dry, we'll then move on to primer. Then we'll start the complete masking process. So let's get cracking. Okay, right, so I know a question that will come up in the comments is, if I stop painting here, why didn't I just go to the edge of the panel? For me, it would be too easy to go to the edge of the panel, but sometimes I like blowing stuff in, and if there's no need to affect this panel, why paint it? You've got to be confident in doing blow-ins and for the purpose of this video, I think I'm going to blow it in. Some of you will say, oh, the blow-in may come back. You know, I've been doing this long enough to know it won't. I have repeat customers where I've blown into their vehicles on certain panels and not gone to an edge. And I've seen repairs after six months, after a year, sometimes even longer, they don't come back. So I think today we'll make the video a little bit more interesting and rather than just go into the edge of the panel, I'll blow it in. It's just masking the areas that we don't want any rubbing down marks to be on. And when I rub down my filler, I use always use a block obviously and I just usually work on the edges first once the edges are gone 
then I'll work over the whole area. So just get rid of my edges, make sure they're nice and faded out. Once they're gone, then I'll rub down the complete area, nice and flat. So I'm really happy with the way the filler has gone into the panel. So much so there's no need for a second skim nor is there any need for any glaze which has self-leveling -lev property. So all I do now is I've finished that in a 320. I'll just run over it very gently and very lightly with a dual action sander with a 320 grit paper. And then I'll go slightly beyond that with a 500 and we'll primer in the middle of the 320 grit sanding marks. And uh, yeah, so let's get it fully prepped for primer. We'll mask out the complete area, then we'll primer that. Prep the primer and we'll be on to paint. We'll just give it another clean because now we're going to start masking the car up finally and make sure everywhere's got no prep residue, any dust or anything that we you know generally don't want to contaminate the paint surface. give inside there a blowout. So a lot of dust coming from in there. First thing I'm doing is masking up the door shut to make sure there is no overspray. Some of you in the trade will say, why am I not using soft edge foam? I have soft edge foam in my van. And to be honest, I love the old school way of a folded edge or back masking. Um, do you know what? I always use the saying, always follow the same process every single time and you'll get the same results. And I just like the idea of folding my own edges. Sometimes with soft edge foam, can leave glue in there which is attached to the lacquer and you know it's good stuff I'm not gonna lie it's cheaper than probably using two inch tape to mask the door shut and it's also quicker but you like what you like right call me old school so again just cleaning up inside the door and then we'll just mask right on the sealer line So there's no evidence that a repair has taken place. And now we'll fast forward a bit. Just doing some final masking and when we're outside it's 
it's not always the easiest. We've got a lot of things to contend with, like bugs on panels. Um, today we're working on the roadside. If you look down the edge of this curb, we've got a lot of dust, tree fallout, environmental fallout, grit and stones from the road. So to try and make our life easier, what I'm gonna do is just mask this car from the car onto the curb to eliminate any of that blowing from the corner of the curb up onto the So just little things like this that help to get a better finish and ultimately give you less flat and finishing to do at the end of the repair. Based up the primed area and also flick some colour into the door. All that's left now is just a final drop coat, just blending out the area where I've based up. We'll just sort of come out this way, flick up into the quarter panel, we'll wait for that to flash off. I'll mix up the clear coat, then we'll clear coat the final part of the job. Summer, this is the sort of stuff we have to contend with. Bugs like paint. And it bugs the hell out of me. So you can see where we've done the blend from the new paint into the old. As I say, I always swear by Speed like a Speed Blender, Watford Bodycraft Supplies. And all we do is a couple of light coats just over the edge of the clear coat. And what that will do is it will break down the clear coat edge. So much so, it'll be nice and easy to machine polish in. So that's the job complete. Up until now, we'll get some heat lamps on and then we'll go through the flat and polishing process. The paint is baked. We'll go for a quick cool down process. A little bit of water. Cool that down. We've got rid of our bug friend, but he's left his legs there, so we'll have to flat them out. And then I'm sure those of you that have watched a few videos know it's gonna be a 2000 wet and dry, just to skim over the top with. And then today, we're gonna to do something a little bit different. We're gonna run over it with a Trizac pad which is a 3000 grit and that'll make it a little bit easier to polish up so we just chuck an extra process in there for you guys at home or wherever you might be watching this from. So again there's literally hardly any dirt in the job so we're just going to lightly glide over the top layer Complete panel, I always flat and polish edge to edge. So 
So now we're going to look for our little bug friend's legs. If you come in here and just see where he's left his legs. So all we do is we'll just glide around that. Sometimes I give my blend just a little bit of a tickle with the 2000. And then what I'm going to do with the bug's legs, and this does actually happen in a spray booth environment. Like sometimes you can get a bug that's managed to get through the door in the booth, and then all of a sudden when you spray your lacquer, you come back after you put the job on bait, and you just see like where the bug's legs were, and then the bug will be somewhere on the panel. So it's not outside. If you're a sprayer, you'll know this happens every now and then. As I say, even in a controlled environment, so I'm just going to grab a block, block out that little imperfection. And then we will hit it with a Trizac disc, a 3000. And that's why it's important you put a nice heavy coat of clear on. So you've got something to work with if you do get a little imperfection or in this case, a bug. So now we'll go with the 3M Trizac pad, which is a 3000 grade. You don't have to go over 2000, you can polish that up absolutely fine, as you've probably seen me do many times before, but just finishing in a 3000 can make your polishing life a little bit easier. So we'll run over the two panels with this and some water and then uh, we'll be ready to machine polish up the panel. So let's do this. So we're done guys, let's have a little look. Obviously the job has been completed now, polished, waxed, color is good. Remember the blend I was talking about, the blowing area. If you come really close, I mean, I wish you could feel this by seeing it, obviously you can't, but there's absolutely no sign of where the new paint meets the old. So that's a perfect blend. I'll say it, I said it before, I'll say it again. Speed Zeka Speed Blender is the best blender out there. Obviously, make sure you know your process. If you follow that, then you will never have a blend pulling back, nor a blend that you can see. And if you just come into the door shop, remember I repaired right on the edge? Have a look inside this door shop. Can you see any evidence of where there was a repair, nor can you see an edge? And that is another video. That is us done for today for YouTube. I'm now off to another location over in South London somewhere to repair a pearl white Nissan GT, a Nissan Skyline. Um, if you want to see that, we're not filming it for YouTube. Look out for some pictures on our Instagram at King Vehicle Damage Repair and follow us there as well. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you on the next one.